Hey guys, Ken here from the Retro Toys Copies channel in Malaysia. We are getting a taste of some bestial devastation here on the channel today as we get the full packaging reveal of the Masterverse 1987 movie Beastman action figure. Now, the Masterverse line has been slowly putting out these 1987 movie themed figures over the last one and a half years, starting with the He Man and Skeletor figures. But due most likely to licensing issues, they could not refer directly to the actual movie on the packaging, not at that time. However, as of the Evelyn release from a few months back, we saw that the box art and description and even the fonts that were used were directly addressing the figure's connection to the live-action movie. Now, these images of the packed and sealed-in box Beastman action figure were making the rounds on social media a couple of days ago. But today, thanks to Manuel Eduardo Caritas on his Instagram page, he has shared out the complete HD resolution photos of the entire package, including the full artwork reveal of everything that appears on the box. Okay, so usually when you get the toy package, you get all this artwork. The artwork's just wrapped around the entire box. But here we get to see the whole thing just in one smooth spread, okay, unfiltered. And from what we can see here, this is one fully epic action sequence that's unfolding, right? We have Beastman and Blade in battle with Man at Arms and the Eternian Palace Guards at the entrance to Castle Grayskull. Now look, guys, this seems to me like a deleted scene from the movie itself, all right? Definitely, I think the budget for the movie could not actually give us something this epic looking at the time. But one of the things that I always wanted to see more of was the actual castle, especially the entrance. It was seen in glimpses, you know, at some parts of the movie, I think maybe one particular part, and that's it. And I think that the image that it showed to us was just something of a matte painting. It wasn't like an actual set of the entrance itself. You know, back in those days in the 80s, a lot of the fantasy movies would just use paintings as the background, okay, because there wasn't a budget to create something so cosmically epic, right? So they just use paintings. At the time, we as the audience would just accept it. You know, maybe we knew that it was fake, but we just didn't care, right? It was just the standard at the time. But I always wanted to see more of the entrance because for some reason, for the movie, they just decided to go with a design that was fully nightmarish, okay? It's not even like 10% of a nightmare. It's the full nightmare, right? It's like this gigantic human-like skull that's at the entrance, okay, to this castle, right? It was freaking terrifying. It's like if the buildings in Dune and Hellraiser decided to have a baby, you know, this is what it would look like, right? So, yes, you know, this thing has always sort of like fascinated me and the fact that we're seeing it here on the artwork, okay? Could this mean possibly, okay, that at some point, we're going to get a version of this castle in toy form? I would say that's highly unlikely, right? But then again, look, stranger things have happened, okay? So what do I know? Now, I've mentioned before that I'm a huge fan of the way the new Masterverse boxes are being designed. You get way much more artwork. You know, these remind me of the old Transformers Kingdom boxes. They are designed the same way. It's like the action figure can be seen at one corner through the plastic, but the rest of the box is just this amazing, sprawling wraparound action shot. I like this thing. And the artwork here, another standout. I believe this is by Eamon O'Donoghue. Another standout piece. Okay, these Masterverse boxes are looking way more amazing than they ever did. Now, on the back of the box, we get the images of the actual product itself. Beastman is seen here in a variety of different poses. The description reads, Beastman, savage henchman, known as a savage mercenary and Skeletor's finest warrior. Is he though? I mean, <laughs> he sure wasn't treated that way in the movie. Now, the snarling Beastman travels to Earth in search of the cosmic key. Okay, so they're basically telling you the plot of the live-action movie here. So while I don't know how they stand on licensing issues, this is as good as it gets when it comes to an official movie time figure for Beastman. Now, based on the product photos here, he does appear to come with one single accessory, which is this long sword that he uses. The sword fits into this sheet that's located at the side of his right hip. Now, overall, he's pretty minimal when it comes to accessories. But then again, you know, this being the movie version, he didn't really come with a lot of stuff in the movie itself. I guess maybe if he got an alternate head, that would have been nice. This other photo here has him sort of like just, you know, uh, coming at you okay, with his hands raised up, you know, like he's about to pounce on you. 
you know, or maybe just uh, about to clap his hands together or something like that. I don't know, okay? But uh, the second photo there looks a bit silly, okay? <laughs> you know, overall, the design for this character, you know, when we first saw him in the movie, I recall not thinking too much about it. I thought that it looked pretty silly. Of course, the movie has a way of just, you know, achieving this sort of a cult-like status in our minds. And throughout the years, you know, I've grown to definitely appreciate it a whole lot more. And now I understand the limitations that they had at the time. I don't think that the Beastman that was in the movie was that terrible in design. He was okay. I think the character portrayal was pretty bad though because at one scene, you know, he was even seen to be crying and groveling at Skeletor's feet. Okay? <laughs> but look, I'm impressed at the detail that went into the armor for this figure and his overall colors are pretty striking. You know, he does look good. I think the main issue that I have here is probably that face sculpt. I don't really think the face cup accurately captures the ferocity that you know he's supposed to have. Definitely not the ferocity that we see here in the artwork. You know, maybe they should have given us a version where his mouth is just open and roaring at you, right? But I kind of feel that this particular representation just maybe falls a little bit off from what the movie version was. But then again, as with all of these things, we really just need to get them in hand to be absolutely sure, okay? But for right now, I would say that, you know, this particular figure is definitely a must-have if you're a fan of the live-action movie because this is the first time that we're getting a movie-styled Beastman figure. He's never been offered before in any other collection. And with his arrival, we finally have all four of the seven-inch scale movie bounty hunters, okay? Guys, the scene where the bounty hunters first appeared in a live-action movie is pretty iconic. You know, when they were summoned by Skeletor to retrieve the cosmic key on Earth. And also, it's very reminiscent of the scene from Empire Strikes Back, of course, when Darth Vader summons all the bounty hunters together to also make a retrieval mission. However, those bounty hunters were hardly ever seen again. Alright, we didn't even see most of them in action outside of Boba Fett. But in the case of Masters Universe, all of these guys had some very good screen time except for Sorot, who was disintegrated pretty early on in the movie by Skeletor. Now, a couple of years ago in 2015, when all of this stuff was still under MattyCollector.com, we got some excellent renditions of both Blade and Sorot. okay? These two are some of the finest figures that ever came out of Moto Classics. I absolutely cherish these two figures. At the time as well, they were limited, okay, in their efforts to actually expand the line to include more of the movie figures. But what they could do were basically reiterations in 7 inch scale of the same figures that were produced during the original 1987 Mattel run. So we also got those figures like Blade and Sorot and also Gwildor, if you remember. Okay, three of those figures were made for the movie line back in the day in the 80s. And that's what we also got in Moto Classics. I think this rendition of Sorot is just pitch perfect. This is the finest Sorot action figure that has ever been produced. Okay, there hasn't been that many though, right? It's only been the vintage one. And there's been this one here from Classics. But I think that this version pretty much is it for me. However, that's not to say that Masterverse will not be doing more of these movie characters. And in the case of some of them here like Blade, which I think the Classics version is also supremely detailed and excellent looking. However, he does look a bit bulked up here. The Blade in the movie is a little bit more leaner. And as such, you know, this particular version in Classics isn't quite movie accurate. So there's room for them to improve, I suppose. And based on the image that is provided here in the artwork of Blade, it definitely captures Blade as he was seen in the movie. And this is the version of him that we actually want in our collections as well. So I'll be looking forward to more announcements from Masterverse, of course, in terms of them expanding the movie line. And then we also have, from a couple of years ago, I believe this was in 2018, when Super 7 had the license, they put out this Commander Karg action figure. Now, Karg looks like a Muppet, but he was the leader of this Bounty Hunter team. And Super 7's rendition of him in action figure format is extremely good. Sadly, I don't have this version of him in my collection. Not yet. Okay, somehow he's eluded me, but it's just a matter of tracking him down, I suppose. Right? So look, guys, you know, if you have the Commander Karg figure from Super 7, and you have these two classics figures of Sorot and Blade, Couple this with the new Masterverse Beastman figure that's coming out and you practically have the power in your hands already to rock the universe with this ultimate theme of 7-inch scale movie bounty hunters. Now, there's a lot more figures that they can still give us from the movie, but the one item that I believe will be a true holy grail for collectors out there is Skeletor's barge. Okay, his weaponized warship as seen in the movie. 
this massive beast okay is just a kickstarter that's waiting to happen now i would be more excited for something like this than that snake lab place i think they've got planned now guys hit me up in the comments let me know what you think of this new masterverse 1987 motu movie beastman action figure thanks for watching the video and i'll catch you guys again real soon take care out there